Good morning. Hello. Welcome to the Crazy Sock Lady YouTube channel. My name is Kay. This is my space where I share all about my making adventures. Right now we are deep into summer sock camp. Not really deep. It just started, but we are into summer sock camp. So I have so many socks to show you today. Just a little look at what you'll be seeing. I have finished a lot of socks. Not necessarily a lot of pairs, but I have finished so we will talk about all of those. But today is June 1st. It is 9.50 a.m. It has been a little bit of a busy morning this morning. I've just been running around, a little busy bee, getting so much done around the house. Yesterday I took Wyatt to Kings Island and we had so much fun, but that meant I was not home to get some stuff done around the house, which is totally fine, but I'm just playing catch up a little bit today. So I thought let's sit down and go ahead and record. Typically I would record on a Wednesday, um, which was yesterday. So we're recording on Thursday today, but that's okay. It's summer, summer break. So just enjoying all the time with the kids and all the time knitting socks, as you can tell. <laughs> I've got some iced coffee today. I hope that you've got your beverage of choice, your knitting, crocheting, whatever things you are working on right now and you are ready to talk about all the socks because I think I've said a million times that's all there is today. <laughs> so we've got finished objects, works in progress. I do have some things that arrived in the mail that I'm super excited to show you guys and I'm itching to cast on some socks with the, some of the yarn that I received. So right now Summer Sock Camp, if you're new here, you may be like, what the heck is Summer Sock Camp? So Summer Sock Camp is our sock make along that runs all summer long basically just make socks. That's the gist of it. Knit or crochet is allowed. Works in progress are allowed. It started last Friday, May 26th, correct? <laughs> and it ends August 31st. So it runs all summer. I have full details on the last episode, which was 186, as well as on a highlight on my Instagram profile. And then in the Ravelry group, you can find links down below for the Ravelry group, my Instagram, all the places you can find me as well as notes for this episode. There'll be links for project pages for everything that I show you, links to any shops that I talk about that are, you know, available to be linked. All of that's right down below. Okay, so let's start with finished objects first. Kind of sort through these because I I took a picture before I started so I've got all of the finished socks here but not all of them are a completed pair some are just single socks okay so first finished object is my Rhinebeck Rumi socks the pair here these were out of the May Yarnable Colorway Unicorn Dreamscape I believe was the name of this one very, very pretty. I did this in the Rhinebeck Rumi's pattern with a knit two, purl two ribbing for 25 rounds, 15 round repeat on the leg. I really love how this one worked up in this pattern. Those blues and pinks. Someone said it looks like cotton candy and it so does. It looks like cotton candy. It's, it's good. So these are done. These are a gift. I don't know when they'll be gifted. They're not necessarily for like a birthday or anything, but these are for a gift. Oh, those I started on May 2nd and finished on May 24th is when I did those. So those do not count for summer sock camp. These next two pairs of finished socks do though. So these are just a pair of ribbed socks that I knit. I'll go over the details on those. But yeah, this was out of Mama Jess yarn in the tie dye colorway. Very, very gorgeous. I've had this in stash for a bit and I was so excited to knit it up. I love how it worked up and I love this ribbed sock. You can see like they look so small and funny when you knit them, but they have so much stretch. The fit is amazing on a ribbed sock if you have not knit one yet. 
So I did the counts from my vanilla socks pattern. I knit these on nine inch circulars and I just did knit two purl two ribbing all over like front and back of the leg and then front or top of the foot. And I just did the slip stitch heel flap from that pattern. All of those counts are the same. But yeah, just a knit two pearl two rib. They fit amazing. I've had so many questions about this, about knitting a ribbed sock and details on it. Is this something you guys would be interested in just a free, super easy, like just PDF pattern for details on a rib sock? I mean, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory just using the counts and then doing knit two pearl two, but I understand the need for like the instructions and because my brain tends to work that way too sometimes so I totally totally get that um so yeah let me know if there's enough interest I'll just write up the the pdf for it and with the counts and put that out for y'all so let me know below kind of what the interest is and just a free download for that was there anything else on this one I don't think so and these are just for me, I think. I don't know. I didn't, I knit them to my size, so I, they're just for me. <laughs> the next finished one, I just realized I did not write the dates down for that one. For when I, oh, I didn't tell you the dates for this one, did I? This one, I started May 13th and finished May 27th. And these were a work in progress when Summer Sock Camp started. So these do count as my first, um, finished socks for camp as a work in progress, but still my first finished. I'm going to track how many I finished throughout camp and then they'll be separate in the way that I'm tracking them as far as like how many whips did I finish and then how many did I start and finish during camp. So these were sock number one or pair number one <laughs> completed for camp in the whip category, which is just something I'm doing. That's not anything with camp. That's just how I'm tracking mine. Okay, these next ones I knit for my niece, Lily. And I just did shorty socks for her. I think I did shorties for her years and years and years ago, but it's been so long, so I thought it would be fun to do shorty socks. I did, I asked my sister Cassie if she was still in the same shoe size as when I knit her her last pair, and she has went up almost two whole shoe sizes since then. So I was so glad that I asked because she probably won't wear these until the fall. She's all about sandals right now. So <laughs> these probably will not get worn until the fall, unless she wears tennis shoes for something, I guess. But yeah, I was, I knit them a little bigger than the size she is currently in, just so she has room to grow in them because She'll be eight in August and I feel like they grow so quickly. So yes, these were for my niece, Lily. I used three by the sea designs, Lily pond sock set. And I'll show you the tag here in a minute because I'm making another pair of socks with my leftovers from these. I just did my vanilla socks pattern, but I, I guess kind of not really because I did 60 stitches and that is not written in the pattern. I feel like that's an update I should do to include some other counts. Um, maybe sometime in the future. <laughs> but I do 60 stitches for her socks right now. That's what fits her great. And I knit these on a US 1 2.25 millimeter. I did Magic Loop. I did a pop of color at the cuff. Contrast heel and toe. And I do have tutorials on YouTube for the pop of color at the cuff for how to do a contrast heel, toe, and cuff. <laughs> and then also I've had a lot of questions about shorty socks. I do not have any patterns specifically written for shorty socks, but I do have a video that explains how you can take any knitting pattern and make it into a shorty sock. So those are all tutorials that you can find on the YouTube channel. For this, I did 15 rounds total knit two purl two rib for the cuff, and then I did four complete rounds on the leg, like just a tiny little bit there, and then on the fifth round, I did the heel flap, so I think she will really like these. Let me see when I started these, because I did not write it down. 
So I started these on May 26th. And I did not even put in here when I finished them. <laughs> oh, no, I actually, did I finish them on Tuesday? Hmm. Yes. I finished them on Tuesday, which would have been May 30th. So I started them May 26th, finished them May 30th. She is in a kid's size still, so they go super quick. Shorty is super quick. So these are pair number two completed for summer sock camp. And I'll probably just hold on to those until I see her next is what I'm thinking because I may end up making her more this summer. So those are all of the completed pairs. Now works in progress. So I am making my sister Cassie a pair of socks out of this same yarn. I had first decided I was going to make myself a pair because this yarn, I love how this works up so much. It is so beautiful. So beautiful. And I was going to make myself a pair. And then I had sent a picture of Lily's sock that I was working on to my sister, Cassie. And she just said how beautiful the collars were in the yarn. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a matching pair of socks for Cassie. So I have one done. I mean, they're somewhat matching. I didn't do a contrast heel, but... I have one done, they're shorties, again. Same thing, oops, with the amount of rounds for the ribbing, the cuff, and the leg. I did the same exact amount there. I cast on 64 stitches, pop of collar at the cuff, contrast toe, and I think I'm gonna have plenty, I mean, I won't have a ton left or anything of the mini still that came with the sock set. So I'm currently working on the second one. I just finished the cuff this morning. So these will be done by tomorrow, probably. <laughs> Again, shorty socks just go so quickly. And a vanilla sock, just plain knitting, no patterning. I just fly through those. So yeah, this is sock number two. I have all of my light bulb markers on there keeping track of my rounds for me i do have a video on youtube for that as well showing how and why i track things that way oh the bag that it's in was a summer sock camp exclusive bag from last year this was by mountain state stitches so i've pulled out some of my bags from previous years to use okay let's Show the scrappy socks next so I have some scrappy socks I'm working on for scrappy Sunday these are in a bag by bags by awesome granny and I finished one so fun these are just all fingering weight scraps I did my vanilla socks pattern on DPNs. Here's where I'm at on the second one. I had 25 rounds of Knit 2 Pearl 2 rib for the cuff. And then for the color changes, I am changing colors every 10 rounds for these. And then I did, I believe, 20 rounds of this color that I did the heel in so I did like 10 rounds on the 10th round I started the heel and then I did 10 more rounds after I'd done like the heel flap and heel turn and picked up the gusset stitches I did 10 more rounds in that color just to make that kind of a color block section there but yeah I'm just using fingering weight scraps from I think they're all from socks that I've made and it's a, just definitely a fun way to use up some scraps. I'm hoping to do so many more of these. I have not, I feel like, used up hardly any of the yarn for just this sock that I've done. So there's still a lot left, but I'm hoping to do more scrappy socks. I am using a US1 2.25 millimeter for those. Knitter's Pride Zings are the DPNs that I'm using. And I should mention I have most, if not all, of the needles you'll see me using linked on my Amazon storefront so you can find those there 
last work in progress is in a bag that was a gift from a viewer, a Jeep bag. And these are just some vanilla socks that I'm working on. This is Regia Perfect. First one is done. Let me show you the tag. The color number is 07120. I've had a lot of questions about where this can be purchased. I It was a gift years ago from Eric for Christmas. I have no clue where he bought it. I'm pretty sure this was when he got me for Christmas. Either that or it was purchased at a local yarn shop on a trip or something. Um, so yeah, I have no idea. I haven't searched online, but definitely Googling or like checking webs, they a lot of the times will carry um, a good stock of yarns like this. So definitely just kind of searching for it online. Sorry, I don't have like the exact place it was purchased. The second one is going. I just love how it is mostly this and then just has those stripes. I think it's so much fun. Just my vanilla socks on nine inch. I'm using Chowgu nine inch circulars. The needle size is a US zero two millimeter. That's what works for me and for my tension and gauge. I don't think there was anything else about those. And that is all of the works in progress. I did decide on the sweater pattern that I'm going to do for Lily. I cannot remember the name of it off the top of my head, but I will put a picture up here and put the name and the designer and link it down below. So I've decided on that it's fingering weight cardigan. I don't think I've done a cardigan for her in a few years. So it'll be a lot of fun to switch it up. And I think she'll really like something that changes colors. And this will be something she can wear over dresses or t-shirts or anything that she wants throughout the fall, winter, spring, um, with it being lightweight. I feel like she'll get a good use out of it throughout a couple of different seasons and not just the dead of winter. <laughs> so I'm excited about this one. I'm excited to get started on it. I'll show you the yarn and all that when, when I get it. So yeah, I can't wait to do that. Um, I wanted to update on that because a lot of people were very concerned that I had forgotten Lily's sweater and no, I have not forgotten Lily's sweater. Um, I just had not decided on a pattern yet. So I have decided now and once I get the yarn, I will get started on it. I received a couple of packages in the mail. I may have done some shopping. Let's see that in just a second. First, I wanna show you the Patreon minis from a homespun house that I received. These are for April. So if you haven't received your April Patreon minis from her, make sure you look away if you don't want to be spoiled. But here are the minis. Definitely getting a little blown out as usual with my lights here. There we go, I think. <laughs> these lights always want to blow things out. But I love these. I can't, these are so fun for summer. So I can't wait to get these added into my DK weight jelly roll. These are fingering weight minis, but I'm just holding them double to make them kind of a DK weight and it works perfect. Um, let's see, let's lay those right there. Okay. In the mail, I received, I think I sent for that one. Yes. Okay, let me open these up because they're in bags. So Legacy Fiber Arts was having a moving sale. I'm not sure if there's anything left or if everything is gone, but they were having a moving sale and I could not resist. I love their yarns. And some of them were mystery. Actually, they might have all been mystery now that I think about it. They were all mystery bundles. And I thought that was so much fun. Because you can't go wrong with anything from them. So it just seemed so fun to just get some mystery bundles and support them with their moving sale. So the first thing I grabbed was their micro skeins. And these are on their Steel Toes base, which is 7525. Here's the three they sent. There are no colorway names on them. It just says mystery micros the 
The second thing I got is DK Weight Mystery Sock Sets. So one of these has two minis, one has one mini, this one has two. There we go. These are so pretty. I haven't done DK Weight socks in a while, so I'm excited to knit up some DK Weight socks. And then these were just mystery on their steel toes base. And this one is Sweet Shop and this one is Sally Owens. Which I feel like I might have Sally Owens on DK Weight or maybe not. I know I ordered something from the Practical Magic. Oh, look how good that is. So, so pretty. So I'm excited and I feel like I need to cast on lots of socks now after I've kicked up all this yarn for summer sock camp. A couple of you said that would happen. I get distracted by shiny things. These are very shiny right now. And what I'm about to show you next is very shiny also. <laughs> Before I show you the next thing, I have to run upstairs. My timer is going off. I made banana bread this morning. So I've got to go get that out of the oven. And then I will show you the rest of the stuff I got in the mail. <laughs> Okay, banana bread is out of the oven. This is my first time making a chocolate banana bread. So I am excited to see how it tastes. It smells amazing. I will link the recipe down below. Um, I think it's from My Gluten Free Kitchen, I believe is the name of the website that I got it from, but I will link it and we'll see how it is. I'm hoping, Wyatt is not a fan of banana bread at all but he is like me and anything chocolate, he will eat it. <laughs> he has my sweet tooth. So I'm hoping the addition of the chocolate will make him at the very least try this bread. We will see. <laughs> okay, next thing I received in the mail is from my friend Jenny of Mountain State Stitches. Oh, I forgot about that. I got some yarn and a project bag. So she had these tie-dye project bags and I could not resist. I love her small drawstring bags. They're perfect for socks. And I love tie-dye. So this was a must have. Then I got some DK weight from her as well. Maybe I'll just go on a whole DK weight sock kick here. This is her spark colorway on her 7525 superwash merino nylon base. It is so gorgeous. Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at this right here. She was knitting socks with this and I had to have it. And I think that's actually her texting me right now because I sent her a picture of the banana bread. Then she also sent me her Sweet Nothing sock set. Again, this one's fingering weight, but the same base, 7525 base. I think these are going to be ribbed socks. That's what I'm thinking. So pretty. So that was you know, the other thing that I received in the mail and you can see why I just want to cast on more socks, both this yarn and the legacy yarn and have all this other yarn I caked up. I've got to get to knitting. So I also ordered some sock week goodies. Sock week is being put on by Knitty Natty. And it's not until July, but she had her, the products go up on sale from the sponsors. So I ordered one of these sock rulers. I have one of these already. They're the um, snap bracelet sock rulers. I will never wear it as a bracelet, but I love that it goes up like this and just fits right down in a project bag. You guys know I have like the sock ruler. I have the Katrinkle sock ruler. So I have quite a few different ones and I use them for every single sock that I make. And the other one that I have of this is just their plain white one. It, it works amazing, um, but I, I wanted a Sock Week one. I don't know. So I got the Sock Week Blue. It has, oh, if I can get it to stay open there. It has the Sock Week logo over here. And then you can see on this size, it has side, it has shoe sizes. 
So it has US shoe sizes for kids, women, and men. And then on the back, this, I don't think this is on the back of my other one. On the back, there are inches and centimeters. So I think that's nice as well. So that was my other purchase. I did purchase a couple of other things from Sock Week and I haven't received them yet, but I, I think they've all shipped. So I should have them by next episode, I would think. I think that's about it for the knitting. So reading and watching, I am currently reading Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. It's good. So far, I feel like it's starting out a little different from her other books, but I'm still really enjoying it. I, I don't think I'm halfway through it yet. I don't know how far I am into it, but not too far. She's been a busy week since the last time I feel like nothing really crazy just little things and busy and the kids are out of school now so that just makes things you know that changes up the whole household routine <laughs> but yeah the kids have been to Kings Island a couple of times already I've only been once Austin is loving you know having his license and being able to just go because we have season passes so he can go with friends quite a bit and he's really enjoying that so far and uh, let's see what else Plants are going great. I talked about those last time. They're all going great. Thank you so much for all of the advice on the fiddle leaf fig. I've left it alone for now. That was like uh, the majority of the advice I got was to leave it alone for a little bit before I decide to repot it or do anything else. So that is what I'm doing. It's not dropped any more leaves. It seems... I don't know it just it just seems okay for now. <laughs> it's not mad anymore. It was very mad about being moved. Um, got a lot of good suggestions about how to repot what to do if I like what to look for with root rod and so thank you guys so much anyways all the suggestions in the comments last time it was great I do have a question though do I just leave I'll put the picture in here if I have it you've seen it last time too the leaves have like I say bad spots I don't know where it was not happy I just leave those leaves alone don't do anything with them just leave them like they are I'm obviously very new at this yeah let me know I'm like do you remove the leaves that are bad then it would have no leaves but like two maybe only one I don't know let me know <laughs> but I should just leave it be but I think that is all that I have for today I can't wait for that banana bread to be cool enough to eat because it smells so good right now. I can smell it all the way down here where I'm at in the basement. But thank you so much for joining me for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you guys again soon. Until then, happy making. Bye.